Hey guys, it's Julian and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Deep Minimal House in the style of Casey Spillman. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all of that from this video in the description. And if you're a patron, I'm a patron and check there because it's already available. Let's get started. So, first thing here is the BPM. We're at 130 BPM, which is actually very fast for a house song. With a lot of Casey tracks and a lot of tracks in this style, they tend to have that more like upbeat, kind of hectic groove to them. So actually, the faster tempo works. And with his most recent EP, I noticed there was a lot of garage influence as well, like UK Garage. UK Garage is typically like maybe 128 and up. So 130 works really well for that. And it gives you like that more kind of intense groove like I'm talking about, especially with all the busy percussion we have. First sound we have here is this road stab, which sounds like this. So what this is, is it's a simple little chord sample here. There it is, it's just a little stab, and then I put it into a simpler here. And you can see we've got it playing, it's playing an A, that's the key we're in, it's just playing A there, A there. And then the air there, so just three octaves, nothing too complicated there. But what's really happening with this sound is the reverb automation. So if you look at this, you can see. The reverb automation gives us a lot of movement. If I play this in the mix, you can hear it gives it that kind of like warping, sort of morphing feel. If I turn it off, it still works in the track, but this really brings it to life. So this is a technique I heard in a few of Casey's tracks, and it's something I do a lot as well. A lot of people do this. Again, it's just a really good way to give your sound kind of like some movement, you know, bring it to life, make it a little bit more interesting. Also got a high pass filter on there, just cutting out the line, making room for the kick and bass. And that is it for the road stab. The next sound we have here is this vocal stab, which sounds like this. So this is just very similar to the last one, it's just a little vocal stab. And I've just got it in a simple here, we've got a bit of echo doing 16th notes, and then the only other effect I have on there is a reverb. And this is also doing some automation, just like with that last one I showed you, you can see this one's a little bit more simple. But again, it just gives the sound like a lot more character. And it feels like it's kind of changing in the track, and it, it just, again, gives it so much more life. And yeah, after that, we have this third chord stab, which is made with Operator, and it sounds like this. So you can hear this one's really short, and this is just playing an A minor chord. That's the key we're in, A minor, you can see. It's just an A minor chord, pretty straightforward there, but then I've got the third, the minor third, and the fifth up an octave. And then the root note is down low, so just kind of simple stuff, you know, this is not really like the biggest element in the mix, but it does add a lot to the groove. You might recognize little kind of like floppy sounds like that <laughs> this is the best way I could describe it from a lot of these kinds of tracks and this is how you make these it's just this little stab it plays very sparsely throughout the track but when it does play you hear it and it adds a lot of groove so with this one it's just a bit of FM I'm just got three sine waves here I'll turn off this bandpass filter so there's the sound and then it's going into a bandpass And then I just have a bit of chorus on there. So, pretty simple sound. There's a little bit of envelope on the band pass as well. But yeah, that is it for the chord stabs. The next sound that we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. The tuner is tweaking out a little bit, but you can see this is tuned to A. Which is the key of the track, so it works really well with the bass. And yeah, it's just like this simple, kind of like, more punchy, sort of like, 909 style kick. This is something I feel is very influenced by UK Garage. This is very much the type of kick you would use in a garage track at the same tempo. So, yeah, just like the shorter, kind of more punchy, 909 style kick. Gotta go into a bit of saturation. Here's without that. 
And then with it, so you can hear it, that's what makes it fatter and makes it really sit, you know, with enough punch in the mix. And yeah, that is it for the kick. Next thing we've got here is the bass line, which sounds like this. So here are the notes. You can see this one is a very simple bass line in the fact that it's only playing A. Like, it's literally just A here. And then A an octave up. And yeah, the main thing with this one is the swing and just having like a busy bass line like this. Like, it's just all about having something where you get all those bouncy notes underneath the very straightforward kick. And the way we get that is with a bit of swing. I also use this on the stabs up top, but you can see like all the 16th notes. I'll set this to the 16th note grid to make it simple for you. But you can see they're all pushed back a little bit. So that's what gives it, you know, that groove. Um, and then for the sound on this one, it's made using operator. What we've got here is just two sine waves. And you can see very simple sound. Just going into a low pass filter here's without that. And then with it, I just wanted to dial it back, make it a bit deeper sounding. I've also got a bit of a pitch envelope. So that's helping with like the punch of the sound and making it hit a little bit more. And yeah, then after that we got a bit of saturation. The saturation is very important for the sound in terms of just making it bigger and fatter. Here's without it. You can hear it just sounds like a little kind of small flimsy sound. But if we turn it on, we get a very fat and powerful bass line. After that, I've got a bit of EQ. This is just boosting the lawn a little bit more, making it even fatter, and then also cutting at 100 hertz, so it just kind of makes room for the kick, because 100 hertz tends to be where the kick is mostly punching through. And then the last thing I have on there is just a compressor, side chaining it a little to the kick. And that is it for the bass. So then I have those two elements in this group, called low end this is meant to be like a bus something where you take multiple sounds in the same sort of group in this case all the low end sounds or like in the next one i'm going to show you like all the percussion sounds and you process them together and what it does is it makes the overall sound a lot better and more punchy more powerful and just stronger and more professional sounding so here is without anything on the group here And then with it, so you can hear the difference. So the first thing here is the saturator. This is the main thing. This is just gluing everything together, pushing together the kick and the bass, and kind of making that fat low end sound like just one very powerful, thick low end in the track. After that, I have a bit of EQ. I have these both before and after. So this is something I've been talking about a lot. I won't go too much on this. But you can see it's just cutting out some low mid-range. So when you use saturation to fatten your sounds up, as we've used on the bass and the kick, and then on both of them together, it tends to add a bit of like muddy stuff in the low mid-range. It's just sort of, you know, what happens. Like you get this very powerful sound, but then you have to kind of dial it back so you can focus in on what you want and just make the sound more focused on not having all that mud. So that's what these are for, just cutting out low mid-range. You can hear the difference. And yeah, that is it for the low end bus. The next thing we have here is the percussion. I'm going to go step by step and just show you all this. The first thing that we have here is this main sort of operator percussion, which would be these two things, which sound like this. So these sounds are both made the same way. What it is, is it's just a short white noise. You can see we got a short envelope on there. Going into a band pass. Oh yeah, that's how you make these sounds. It's really not that complicated. And then what makes them different is just kind of the way we've treated them after. So with this first one, you can see it's a lot higher, first of all. The band pass is just making it like more of a bright, kind of like hi-hat-esque sound rather than that other one, which is more like a... But with this one, we've just got a bit of LFO moving the filter. Just to give it some movement and make it like not just sit in the same place the whole way through. And yeah, and then I've got a bit of saturation. This really helps with these operator percussions to make it not just sound like a basic synth. But it gives it a bit more like power and makes it feel more like an actual percussion. 
Then, the only other thing I have on there is just an auto pan, just moving it around slightly. You don't want a whole lot of stuff like this because this is club music, it still needs to work in the club. Club systems are always in mono, but having something like this is nice. You can hear this to kind of stand out. And it's like you have this bright high end thing bouncing around from the left to right ear, which is a very pleasant thing to hear in the mix, I feel like. So then for the second one, again, it's a really similar sound. You're really similar programming as well. But with this one, it's just, so we got the white noise going into the bandpass filter. The bandpass filter has a lot more resonance. The frequency is lower. Got the LFO moving it. Then we have a bit of echo. Very simple. And then just some saturation as well to fatten it up. You can hear the echo kind of helps to fill in the space in between the notes. Since this is a more sparse sound. And then the saturator is taking it. And just like I said with that other one, making it feel more like a percussion and less like a dry synth. After that, we have these other two operator percussions, which sound like this. So you can hear it's like this little bell sort of sound and then this little zap. So for the zap, I'll show you that first because it's the more simple sound. With this one, you can see, yeah, really straightforward. Just like a little, we've just got a sine wave inside of operator here and we've got a pitch envelope on that sine wave. That's what's giving it the zap sound. Uh, yeah, then after that, we just have a bit of echo. You can see this is unsynced. This is important because that's what gives it that, like, kind of faster thing like that where it's, like, not even so much you could hear there's an echo on there. But just that there's a little bit more space to it. I've also got a bit of saturation on that, just fattening it up. A bit of an auto filter cutting out the low end. And that is it for the zap. And then with this first one here. So this one is actually made in a pretty similar way. You can see we've just got some FM with this one. So it's two sine waves. Get the second one up pretty high. And then we have a pitch envelope on there just giving it like that. Kind of thing. And then I have a bit of saturation. And so these two are playing off each other. You can hear what these add to the mix though. In terms of just like making everything, you know, beefing it up. Making it a bit more exciting and and all of that. After that, we have this crash, which sounds like this. You can hear this one just gives a little at the start of every bar there, or every few bars, I should say. This is something I hear in a lot of these kind of tracks. Basically, it's just this longer crash sample. And then I'm just gonna high pass and it's really short. Just plays that little right at the start there. And yeah, after that we have the hi-hats, which all together sound like this. So what's happening here is we have kind of like two main layers and then one underneath it that's just playing kind of sparsely. You can hear two main layers are these two, this one, and then this one. So kind of like a brighter, sharper hi-hat. And then more of like a short open hi-hat on top of it. The main thing with this is just to keep in mind the layering, the bright one adds that sharpness. And then this is giving you that more familiar body to the sound. But also with this one is just this shorter sound. Like, you don't want a longer open hi-hat. I actually shortened this a bit. You don't want something like that. That's not really going to sit in this mix very well. But if you tighten it up like this. Yeah, you can get a more controlled sound like this. And it fits more with that, like, tight UK garage drum sound I was talking about before. And then the last one is just this one. Which just plays on that one upbeat there. It's really simple. But it just kind of mixes it up a bit. It's meant to be kind of like that crash where it just goes. 
in a, ra- in a real random feeling spot. Obviously, it's not random, but it feels random when you're listening to it. Uh, yeah, it just gives the track something a bit more exciting. After that, we have these two percussions, which sound like this. So you can hear with both of these, they are very much subdued and just kind of in the background, adding like some nice mid-range. And adding more to like the overall energy of the percussion. So here's the first one. It's just this rim shot sound. And I put it through a bandpass filter. And then same thing with the second one. It's this sound. And then I put that through a bandpass filter. So yeah, it's a good technique to add something to the drums without having to get in the way of everything else. Like we already have so much bright high-end between the hi-hats and that operator percussion. So something like this fits really well into the mix. After that, we have the shaker. Pretty simple. It's just a shaker. Again, just kind of adding to the overall intensity of the percussion. And adding to that hectic groove that has a lot of stuff going on. And then after that, we have this first clap. So you can hear that's just playing on the two and the four. Pretty standard stuff. But then we also have this clap underneath it. So yeah, you can hear this one just adding some more percussion. Again, it's all about adding like all these small layers. Like we have so much percussion here, but it's all doing just a little bit it's adding up to make this overall picture, you know, very big and very full and very busy in a controlled and clean and more refined way. So then I've got all that percussion in a group together. Again, it's just like with the low end bus, just tying all the similar sounds together. Here's with nothing on the group. And then with the processing. So you can see we just have a bit of saturator. That's really fattening everything up. And also helps to tie it together. And then we have the CQ8. And with this I'm just boosting the high end a little. You know, it just makes it a bit sharper. Makes it stand out of the mix a little bit more. And yeah, that is it for the percussion. The only other thing I'll show you here is I do have a bit of mastering stuff on here. Just like I was saying in the other video the other day where I did this. I feel like this is a good thing to do because a lot of times these videos can only get so close without mastering. Like obviously, this is still a very high quality and professional sounding mix without any mastering. But it's always just going to be slightly underneath the quality of what you hear in Casey Spillman or any artist that I do in their tracks because obviously their tracks that you've heard have all been mastered. You've never heard a Casey Spillman track that wasn't mastered. So then we add this stuff on there. It gives it that last little thing just so you like when you're hearing this it really sounds like like the track and like the music we're trying to make. So the first thing here is just this, dr- this dynamic tube. Here's without it. And with it, so you can hear this just ties everything together a bit more. It makes everything a bit fatter as well, kind of putting everything through a very light saturation like this. And it's just helping to like glue everything together. After that, speaking of gluing things together, we have this compressor. Here's without this. And with it, so you can hear this makes the mix feel a lot more even. This really helps when you have a hectic and busy track like this. You can hear it's really making the percussion feel like it's all kind of more on an even level. And with this, the key is just not doing too much. I've got the threshold there where it's really just compressing the peaks and bringing down those volume levels. And then I've got the attack up quite a bit. So the attack is how long it takes for the compression to kick in, meaning it will take a little bit longer to come in. And you can keep it from messing up the transients of your sounds. If you look at like the percussion, you can see we have a transient like right at the start, like with this hi-hat here, right there. What can happen is if you don't use the attack on the compressor, you'll accidentally flatten that out. We don't want to do that, so this is just turned up a little. Moving it out of the way of that. And then the last thing here is the limiter. And this is just to turn the gain up and get it, you know, hitting 0 dB in a clean way. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you all enjoyed. You all, not y'all. <laughs> as always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the project file and samples of mini and presets. Everything that I just showed you in this video in the description. So you can make your own tracks in the style and get them released on professional labels. Thank you so much guys and I will see you tomorrow with another video.